So in this video I'm going to be going through the map making tool with Dungeon Draft and teaching you exactly what you need to know to be able to go and use it right away. And as I explain how to use the tool I'll be giving you some tips and tricks along the way as well to make your maps really pop and stand out. So if you click this video just out of curiosity and you're already using Incarna I would definitely suggest having a look at this and then maybe picking it up yourself. So without further ado let's jump into the tool. So here we are in Dungeon Draft and I'm going to go through all of the different aspects that you see on the screen right now. But before we get into all the different menus and bits like that, I just want to give you a few tips of how to move around the tool a bit easier. So first off along the bottom you'll see a few options so you can see that you can turn on and off the grid depending on what you need. You can turn off the snap to grid so you can see this little yellow dot is snapping to the corners of the grid. You can turn that off so you can put it anywhere. You can also turn on and off the lighting, so there is lighting in this tool, and then there's also a zoom feature and a layer feature. But some shortcuts, you can hold down space and then move the mouse, and that will move you around the map. You can also hold control or command on the map, and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And something you're probably going to find yourself doing quite a lot is going back to the select tool, and that's pressing the X key will take you to the select tool. They're all the shortcuts that you will probably be using quite a lot as you're using the tool. If there's any other shortcuts that I think are helpful, I'll let you know as the video goes on. So let's go along the top to start and you've got your menu which has all of your settings and everything you would expect in a menu. And then you've got new which will create a new map, open which will create a map you've already saved, save which will save your map, export which is what you do when you finish the map and you want to export it as an image file. You've also got assets, so this is where you could import assets outside of Dungeon Draft into Dungeon Draft. I'm not going to be going into this hugely in this video, but this is where you would do it. And then there's a little about button here, which just tells you what version of Dungeon Draft you're using and a few other details. And then along the left, if we start at the top, you can go to design and then you've got a few different tools here. And I'm going to go through all of the different tools. Starting with this first one, which is the building tool. And something that Dungeon Draft does, which Incarna and some other tools don't do, is you can choose your floor and your wall, and then you can click and drag, and it will make the room for you. So here's what I mean. You can select this floor here, so the wooden floor and then the wooden wall, and then you can click and drag and make a little box here, and it will create that as a room with the walls and the floor. In other tools, you have to do this separately, and you can do that separately in this tool as well, which I'll get to in a bit. But this does save quite a lot of time when you're trying to make a building with different rooms and stuff like that. And then along the top you can choose the different shapes, so we did a square there, but you could also have it as a circle and it just makes it like that. And then there's one here where you can click all the points, so we could click a triangle style one there and it will make a triangle room. Something else that comes up quite a lot in this tool is this little bar here, which means you can change the colour. So if I wanted a red floor, for example, and this would be very red here, I can change that and now I have a red wood floor, which looks pretty disgusting. And then there's the same down here for the wall as well, if you want to change the colour of the wall. And then with any of the buildings, you can click this edit points here and then it'll give you this yellow dot that will go along the wall and you can add points to the wall and then you can click and drag them if you wanted to change the shape that way. So really with this one tool you can make a pretty good building and you can even change the shape quite a lot to fit exactly what you need. Now I'm going to get rid of all of this so I can show you the next tool and there's a few ways you can do that. You can click undo up here until it's all gone and you can press ctrl z on the keyboard to get rid of them as well. But you could also go to the select tool by pressing x or by clicking over here and then you can select it and then press the delete button here or click the delete button on your keyboard and it will get rid of the aspects. So now let's go on to the next tool which is the wall tool and this does exactly what you would expect it to. You can select what type of wall you want to make and then you can click and drag and make a wall of any shape you like and it doesn't put the floor in like the building tool. Once again you can change the colour down the bottom here and there's also this little toggle here for the shadow so you can turn it off and on. So for this one we had it on and then I'll make another one over here with it off just so you can see the difference. So hopefully you can see that there's a bit of a shadow on this one and there's not one on here at all. You can also edit the points like you could in the building tool and then you can put it under or over different objects on this layer. And then once you've created your walls like this, you can go to the next tool, which is called the portal tool, which is basically where you can put in your windows and your doors. So let's select this door here, and then you'll see that as you hover over the wall, a door will appear, and then you can click wherever you want it, and it will put a door in the wall. 
Now, if for some reason you did want to put a door on the map and you didn't want it on a wall, you can click the anchored off here so it's freestanding. And now, as you can see, you could put a door over here if you wish. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to put a door here. And then you can also see at the top here, you can choose if this is going to block light or allow light through. So we block light with that one, but then we could unclick and put one here. And now that will allow light through. So if you were putting windows on here, for example, you might want to unclick that so it allows light and then put the windows in. Well, we're going to skip the next tool for the moment, which is the cave brush, as we're going to go to the pattern tool. And this is where you can put your floor in. So let's just choose this floor here and you can choose the shape. So we could go with a square or a circle. I'm going to choose my own points and then I'm going to put it in the same shape as this. And now it's made a floor to that room. Once again, you can change the color down here. And if I just make a little floor here, you can see that there is no outline. But if I click this outline on and then I make a floor, you can now see that there is a black outline around the edge of the floor. This is the first tool we've looked at where you can change the layout. So you can change the layout to various different layers on here. There are some layers which are only for portals, walls, roofs and stuff like that. But you get quite a few layers that you could put this pattern tool on top of if you wished. Now we're going to go to the roof tool and we're going to choose this style here. And then just to show you how it works, I'm just going to make a little square here. And you can see that it automatically puts the roof together. And then down here, there's a few different types of roofing. So if I put another one here, you'll see that this is a different type of roof. And then the dormer one, which is another different type as well. Along the bottom, you can decide if you want shade on your roof and in the sun direction and the shade contrast as well. So you can get some minute details if you really want them. And then as well as just doing a quick box, you can choose manual and then you'll see that this width has appeared. So if I show you how the manual works, you click one place and then you click another place and then you can turn it and click another place. And then if you want to finish there, you just right click and then it finishes that roof. And then if I change the width to one, you can see that it's just a smaller width of a roof that I can make here, just like that. So we're going to go back to the cave brush that we skipped over earlier. And basically you choose your brush size up here and then you click and drag. And then when you let go of your click, it will make a little cave and even put the walls in for you. And then if you were to want to add a bit to the cave, you can just click and drag and then it will change it just like that. And then you'll see near the bottom here, there is a blast open button. So if I use that on this wall here, for example, it would blast it open. So there would be no wall or floor. And then if you wanted to see where you had chosen for the blast to be, you can click this and it shows you it in red. And then you can change the ground color to whatever you like. So let's just make it really vibrant blue and then the wall color to whatever you like. So let's make that vibrant. Uh, yellow and then when you click and drag it's going to make a pretty hideous cave but you can see that it does change the colors so you could get a bit creative with that i do actually really like this tool it makes making caves a lot easier and i've spent many a time on the incarnate taking ages to make a cave whereas with this you can just make it nice and quickly so there are all the building tools let's go down to the terrain tools which are the one just below it on the left here so let's start with the terrain brush and you can see that there are a few different brushes here but if you click into these nine squares here it will open up all of the different terrains they have but just above them there is this drop down here which you can then select a biome and it will give you that terrain brush so for example you could have a, a desert brush but if you did want all of them and wanted to mix and match you can just click in here and choose what you like so let's go back to the settlement and I'm going to make the brush size a bit smaller by dragging it there. You can also use the mouse wheel to make it bigger and smaller if you wish. And then you just hold down the click button and you will see that the terrain starts to appear. How quickly that terrain appears is down to the intensity here. So if I put that all the way up, you'll see that it starts to appear much quicker. If you wanted to fill the entire map with a terrain, there is a fill button here and it will change the entire terrain. I'm just going to change it back to dirt. And then there's also a smooth blending, which means that when you use the brush, you'll see that the outer edge is feathered. So it's a little bit less harsh. And then you can unlock four more slots if you want, and it will give you some more slots to be able to use your brushes. And then the next tool is the water brush, which works exactly how you think it would. You can choose some shapes here. So I could make a square bit of water here. And something you'll notice that any terrain that is underneath the water has that little shimmer to it. So you can add gravel underneath it, for example, to give it a bit more depth. And then there's also brushes along the top. So if you wanted to draw your own shape, you can do that just like that. And then it will make the water like that. 
So there is this deep color and this shallow color, and then there's this blend distance that decides how much of the deep color and how much of the shallow color is in it. So if we put that all the way down and we make one little bit up here, you'll see there's not much of the shallow color. Whereas if I put it all the way to the top and then draw it, it's pretty much all the shallow color. And then once again, you can change the color. So I could change the deep color to yellow, for example, and the shallow color to red. And then as I draw it, it's gonna look like that. Once again, pretty horrendous. As well as the water brush, there is a material brush, which has some other options. So there's a lava one here, for example. So if you wanted to add some lava to your map. And the only options here are the brush size and in which layer you want to put it on. But there's a few different brushes here. There's like a little uh, slimy acidy one there as well. And then there's this gravelly one. So there's a few more options here. And then the last tool in this section is called the path tool. And basically you can choose something like some train tracks and then you can drag it. And then every time you click, you can then turn it just like that. And you can make a path as they call it. And then it's just a right click to stop drawing. And there are some options here. So there's the width of whatever path it is you've chosen, the smoothness. And then there's this transition in and out, which is a little bit different. Let me show you what that does. So let's pick this one here. So if I drew it normally without a transition in and out, it would just look like that. But if I put the transition in to fade and then the, the transition out to shrink, for example, and then I drew it, you'll see that at the end of the path, it shrinks and at the beginning of the path, it fades in. So it's quite a nice little detail that you can add to your maps with these transitions. Right, so now onto the next tool, which is the object tool. And this pretty much works exactly how you imagine it to work. So there's all of this library of objects on the right here. And then you choose one. So let's just choose this. And then you can place it where you want by left clicking. You can use the mouse wheel to rotate it as well before you place it. And then if you hold Alt and do the mouse wheel, you can change the size. But there's also the sliders on the left. And then if I place this one and then I change the shadow to be off and place one next to it, you can see that the one on the left has a shadow. So you can decide if you want the object to have a shadow or not. Now, quite a lot of these assets, you can actually change the color. So if I pick this bed, for example, you'll see that there's a custom color here and I can change that to green and then it will change the color of that asset. And then if you're scrolling through the library on the right, you can see that anything that is this color green will show up here. And that means that I can change the color of it. So this temp, for example, I could pick it and then I could be like, oh, actually, I want it to be this sort of maroony color. And there you go. And then I can place it. On the left, there is also a load of tags. So you can scroll through and say I was making a blacksmith's place. I can click blacksmiths and then on the right, it will only show me objects that are from a blacksmith. And then if I had placed something like that and I changed my mind, I wanted to move it or change it at all, I can press the X key to go to select tool and then I can select it and I can make it bigger, I can move it wherever I want and do whatever I want with it. And then on the left here, there's also a copy and delete. And then there's this little drop down just to the right of tags, which basically it amalgamates a few tags together to make something like a dungeon. So if I click dungeon, it's going to select a load of different tags of stuff that you might find in a dungeon. So you can then scroll through and choose what it is you want, which is actually quite handy. And then just below the object tool is the scatter tool. And then you can select something like this book and then you can click and drag and it will scatter it around the map. And there's a few options here. So you can choose how spread apart they are. So the lower the number, the closer they will be. And then there's the rotation one that shows how different of rotation you want it. So if you put them both on the same point and then do it, all of the books would be facing the same way. And then there's scale, which is just the size. Well, yo, so onto the next tool, which is the effect tool. And if you go to environment, all you can do is change the ambient light. So you could make it a sort of reddish hue if you liked, but that's pretty much all you can do here. And then there is the light tool. So to be able to show you how this works, I need to make some walls. So let's go over to the building tool and let's put in a building like that. And then I'm going to go over to the portal tool and we're going to put in a door that does not allow light and then a window that does allow light through. And now if I go back to the light tool, I can choose a different style of light. So there's a few different styles here and then I can put them on the map. And as you can see down the bottom here it is not allowing light to go through. And then up here it allows the light to go through. And then I can just click where the light source is and there you go. You can also decide to turn the shadows off here, which means rather than it blocking the light like so, the light will just go straight through everything. And then the range and the intensity just shows how big of a range the uh, light hits. And then the intensity is how bright the light is. 
And once again, you can change the color of the light. So if you wanted a green light, you can put that in as well. So below that, there is the map settings. And there's a few different things here that you can do. So you can change the style of the grid. You can change the color of the grid. And there's a few different things. I'm not going to go too much into the settings. And then there's the level settings here as well. So you can organize your levels. But one tool I do want to talk about in here, which is quite useful, is this trace image. So you can upload a image file onto the map. And then you can trace over it with walls and whatnot in Dungeon Draft itself. So if you're getting inspiration from a map which is already made, you just want to remake it in the style of Dungeon Draft, this makes it a lot easier. And then below that, we've got the text tool that does pretty much exactly what you would expect. So you can click there and then you can write whatever it is you want. And then there's a few different options. So you can change the font just as you would expect to. You can change the uh, size of the text. You can change the color of the text. And you can also add this text box around it, which gives you a few more options. So you can make it a rounded corner. You can change the background color, the border width and stuff like that. So pretty much it does everything you would expect a text tool to be able to do. And then the final tool on the left here that we haven't spoke of is the prefabs tool. And this has saved me so much time. So if I click crates, for example, it gives me a load of crates that are already together and already made into a scene that I can then plop wherever I want on the map. And as you can see, there's a few different ones. So there's a fallen tree, there's a smithery set. And it just means that you don't have to every single time you're making a market map, for example, you don't have to put each individual crate down one at a time. And you can also make your own prefab. So if we go back to the object tool, and I'm just going to use the scatter tool just to make it a bit easier. And we place a load of books down. And I decided I want to use that exact layout of the books multiple times. I could go to the select tool. I could click and drag over all of these back books and then click make a prefab. And then it asked me to give it a name. So I will call it test and accept. And then when I go back to the prefabs, there's one called test that if I click, it gives me the exact same load of books. So yeah, that's pretty cool and can really save you some time, especially if you're making a lot of maps in the same sort of area. So that's pretty much how you use Dungeon Draft. It's pretty simple and really is effective to make maps. And then once you have done that, you just click export at the top here and it will give you a few options of how you want to export it, what grids you want put on it and stuff like that. So there you go, you are fully proficient with Dungeon Draft. If there's anything that, that I missed or you didn't fully understand, put it down in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you did find this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It will help show this to more people that might find it useful as well. And if you have decided that maybe Dungeon Draft isn't for you and you want to learn Incarnate, I have also done a video just like this on Incarnate, which I will link around here somewhere. But until